Lata Ma'am coming here. She has been a scientist for almost 37 years now. And she has done uh, theology and she has done uh, counseling courses. And uh, she will be talking to us about filling your love tank when it is empty. So over to Lata Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Beatrice. Thank you. Today I'm going to speak about filling your love tank. Actually, this is a very important topic, but I am not going to talk exactly as you will be listening from a counselor. I'm going to slightly turn it around and talk from the biblical angle. So filling your love tank, all of us have, um, might be driving car or would have gone in car or anywhere. If you don't have fuel, your car won't run. The same manner in your life, if you don't have your love tank filled, it's very difficult to run. All of us can agree. Your So today, I want you to uh, just imagine yourself. And this talk is going on. Imagine yourself. How is your love tank? Is it filled or is it empty or is it half filled? So let's just go ahead. How do we do this? The heart of practically all relationship distress is not conflict, I would say. It's rather a lack of connection. We don't get connected. I'm not going to talk only about husband and wife relationship. I am today going to talk about all the relationships that form part of your life. Might be you're a parent, might be you're a friend, you're a colleague um, or whatever it is. It's not about uh, only husband and wife. So the thing what I'm going to talk, talk about is all relationship together. So yeah, a secure emotional connection is very important to our happiness, to our self-esteem, and even our personal development. It's even when we are child or when we are adult. So what is the cruelest punishment if somebody asks? It's a solitary confinement, complete disconnection. So because we are wired to connect, that's why people were uh, sent out to islands alone. You know, John, the, our uh, John, the, the apostle, he was sent to Patmos Island, but was he alone? He was not having any human connection, but he had the spirit connection. That's different. But why it's a great punishment, you know, because a, ma a man or woman feel empty, lonely, broken when they are disconnected from everyone. Let me take an example of a husband and wife or a parent and ch child, whatever it is, some two people. So now if you are in a family, if a family members are giving you emotional support, understanding, affection, time together, your love tank will be full. Your otherwise, for example, there are a lot of negative experience, like nobody is looking at you. It's personal attack. It's withdrawing. It's conflict. It's broken trust or lack of affection, your love tank leaks and then slowly it becomes empty. So um, so how do we rebuild it? A conflict is repaired, a stress is soothed, a trust is rebuilt, a relationship is strengthened. This is the way um, Gary Chapman, he tells that everybody has different love languages. So we need to know the other's love language so that we can repair their love tank. So he teaches husband and wife uh, to just understand the love languages. All of you know about the love languages. It's quality time, touch and gifts and so many five love languages he has given. I'm not going to talk about this. We can talk some other day. It's a very important topic uh, like for premarital or strengthening marriage. It's a very important topic. But today my thought is on a different angle. So this is the way Gary Chapman and many counselors speak. Let me give you an example of a video just to understand once again. See, all of us need love and belonging. That's what our counselors were uh, speaking. We have to be loved. We have to be cared for. We have to be supported. We have to be kind. We sh people should be kind to us. But when we don't get that love tank filled, what happens in the natural realm is we become suspicious, we become lonely, we become withdrawn, we become depressed. Sometimes people explode because their love tank is empty. That is some of the main reason for conflicts in families. So, so what we do is they can't compare this love and belonging to your fuel tank. How much it's empty? So how should we fill it? 
So it has to be filled by using love languages and others, by taking care of others, by spending quality time, by touching, by giving love and all those things. This is a way of filling your love tank. So this is a way people talk about. But what if you don't have anybody in your life to fill your love tank? What if um, people, for example, this is a way people can applaud you. People can appreciate you. People can tell you, are good, I love you and all such things. So now if these things doesn't exist, then what do you do? Or so that's when I wanted to show you how can you take your vehicle to the fuel tank to fill it. All of us have to take our vehicle to a fuel tank. But what is the fuel tank? Is it the people around you who has to fill you? Or is it something else? When you depend upon the people around you to fill you, you remain empty. You remain empty most of the time because people are all fallen human beings. Many times we don't get filled the right way. People might not be able to understand your love language. Even if they understand, they might not like to do it. So do we remain sad? Do we remain depressed? Do we remain lonely? Just because our, do we compare ourselves to others who have everything around them in our way, in our idea? No, there is some other better way. This is what God taught me. You know, um, as per the worldly way, if you see, there are two options they give. One is repair your love tank on a refill it on a daily basis by being with good people. Or allow the relationship problem to accumulate. For example, it's like a crazy cycle. Bible has given one command to both husband and wife. Wife, love your husband. Husbands, respect your wife. If these two doesn't happen, there's a crazy cycle. And the relationship problems get accumulated and drained. Right? But sometimes you can't control it. Many things. I have. We have a lot of ladies in our group. Um, who has faced, who are still living in an empty marriage where they don't get their love tank filled. Um, there are a lot of women and men who are living in work atmosphere where they get their love tank drained. There are a lot of men and women or even children who don't get their love tank filled by their parents. So what should we, they do? A Christian Joy is the central for a Christian. Bible clearly says Jesus was full of joy when he was going to the cross. So how do we do that? How can we get that our love tank filled when everything is making us to become empty? That's what today I'm going to speak about. See, I wanted to say once upon a time, God took me on a journey. He showed me that my love tank had been damaged. There were a lot of holes. I couldn't trust God. I had my fist against God. God, if you exist, why don't you help me? I stopped trusting because it had holes. Then there is a beautiful verse. Lord, satisfy me in the morning with your unfailing love. I learned to dance for the Lord. I learned to sit at his feet. I learned to enjoy his presence more than anybody else. God started to fill my love tank. That is why I earlier I couldn't accept that love from him or others because my love tank had holes. It was worn out. It was crushed. It was dented. But God showed me nobody can love like I love. So my job was only to surrender completely to him and to trust him. And also learn to love myself. I should not be a doormat. I should not be. I should have my proper boundaries. These sort of things, it was God who taught. So it is not, I wanted to say, the world may say it is the job of your partner to fill your love tank. Or it's the job of your parent to fill your love tank. But I would say today, it's the job of you to go and sit before God, fill your love tank. Why I want to say is focus on how you can glorify God by selflessly loving and serving the people. Only if you give love, I would give love. This, this is not what Jesus said. He looked at the world and he looked at his disciples and said, do not be like them. Do not be like them. 
they say um, if they hit you in one um, cheeks, show the other. He's, he's changed everything. We set our mind on serving him. Rather than asking why others in our lives are not meeting my needs, I am determined to serve God. This is about Christ and living a life that models his, that is sacrificial and others oriented. So why it's so important, I'm going to tell a different story and from the Bible and finish it. Because sometimes we always think of us pity partying and just wondering why God, others have got this one, others have got this, everybody are getting it. But for me, nothing is happening. When we wonder about it, we forget to close the gap around us or our families. Many women I have seen, they are worried about the problems of their husbands and they forget to pray for their children. They forget to... You know, enemy is battering against every gap that you give in your life and they come, want to get into the gap to enter your life. Um, so you need to stand against it and fight. I wanted to give this one example in 2 Samuel 20, 15 to 22. You can read there is a man called Sheba. He rebelled against David and he's going and hiding himself in a city of big walls so David will not come but David had a faithful man called Job so Job wants to get the head of Sheba so he comes and starts battering the city up and down he's battering battering the walls he's trying to hit the wall and now when he hits the wall the wall breaks up it is not only a problem to Sheba it's a problem to the whole city but the men in that city are not bothered they are just doing their work Nobody is bothered. Their children can be killed. Their family can go. But there was a wise woman in that city. She came forward. She didn't think of her. She came forward. She boldly spoke to Job. What do you want? You have a rebellion in your city. Send that rebellion out. So Job went. Go, so she goes back and she gets the head of Sheba and pulls it out, throws it out, and saves the city. She's called as the mother. Deborah is the mother of the nation. So each and every one of us today on this Women's Day, I want you to know that you are a mother, not only for your family, you are a mother for the nation, you are a mother for your letters, you are a mother in your church, church, in your work. You need to fight against when, when the people who are supposed to fight, they keep quiet. How do you fight on your knees? Because any, it, there is a lot of things that's happening in the spiritual realm. Enemy wants to take the nation. Enemy wants to take families. So instead of worrying about our life and pity partying it, let's give it to God. <clears throat> let's not worry about our love tank. It, let, it, let us get it filled by God. I'm not telling not to worry, but I want to tell the best way of filling it. If it is good, if you have a great husband, it is good if you have a great parent, it is good if you have a great friend. But if nothing is there, it is God who says, I, in Isaiah 54, 5, your maker is your husband. That means he fills the place where others cannot fill. So ask him to give you an understanding what needs to be topped up, how it should be repaired so that you can stand in the gap and fight for your family, fight for your nation. So I want to end it by praying Ephesians 3, 17 over you. I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, and how high and deep is the love of Christ.